I remember that morning going to the lab and I was thinking, this is it. This is the last Jeopardy game. It became real to me when the music played and Johnny Gilbert said from IBM Research in Yorktown Heights, New York, this is Jeopardy. And I just went Vroom. This is Jeopardy, the IBM challenge. And here it is. One day, this is the culmination of all this work. To be honest with you, I was emotional. I just thought about all the genius and all the talent of these researchers. I mean, they changed their lives. They changed the way they work, which is not always easy. They made this thing happen. You know, when you look at that stage, you see Ken and Brad and Watson, and there's 30 people standing behind Watson. And that's just the core team. There's a whole army of people that have helped make this happen. Here we go. Once we got into the game, it was nerve-wracking, frankly. Brad, if you're ready, make your first choice. Let's take alternate meanings for 200, Alex. Four-letter word for a vantage point or a belief. Brad. What is a view? Yes. After the first clue of the game, which Brad won, I had just this horrible feeling at that moment that he was as good as everyone said he was, and he was just going to run the whole board on us. Uh, alternate meanings, 400. Four-letter word for the iron fitting on the hoof of a horse or a card dealing box in a casino. Watson. What is it? Shoe. You are right. We actually took the lead. We were ahead of them, but then we started getting some questions wrong. Watson. What is leg? No, I'm sorry, I can't accept that. What is 1920s? No. What is cheek? No, sorry. Brad. What is class? Class, you got it. Watson. What is Sauron? Sauron is right, <sighs> and that puts you into a tie for the lead with Brad. A lot of people were feeling good because Watson held his own and, you know, was doing pretty well. But I wanted to be winning. Too close for comfort. <laughs> Ken, you're in third place. That means you go first in double jeopardy. The double jeopardy round of the first game I thought was phenomenal. Watson went on a tear. Watson. Who is Franz Liszt? You are right. What is violin? Good. Who is the church lady? Yes. <laughs> Watson. What is narcolepsy? You are right, and with that, you move to $36,681. Let's take a look at the category for Final Jeopardy. U.S. cities. Final Jeopardy is hard for us. Those questions are tricky, and they often involve putting two different pieces of information together from different places. It involves what we think of as number of hops to the answer. So you have something missing in there that Jeopardy wants you to think of. Here is the clue. Its largest airport is named for a World War II hero. Its second largest for a World War II battle. To a human, I think that's a very hard question to get wrong. And I'm used to seeing all three players nail very easy questions. So I get it right, then Brad gets it right. Watson only gets it wrong, but he names a city that's not a US city. What is Toronto with a lot of question marks? Now people look at that and say, wait a second, you know, Toronto isn't even a US city. Watson's not dealing with structured databases. It's trying to understand language. There are lots of cities in the United States named Toronto. The actual city in Canada also has a baseball team in the American League. Very often there are categories in Jeopardy, but the answers to the questions are not that type of thing that's named in the category. The Watson system knows that and says, yes, U.S. City might be part of answering this question, but there are other elements in this clue that must be considered. Most importantly, the confidence for that answer was very low. It's definitely not a question that Watson would have buzzed in for if it had had the choice. The illusion is that this computer is doing the same thing that a very good Jeopardy player would do. It's not. It's doing something sort of different that looks the same on the surface. And every so often you see the cracks. And the wager, how much are you going to lose? Oh, you sneak. $947. After the first game, we have a pretty good commanding lead, but we've seen enough Jeopardy to know that this is not a lockout. Welcome to the deciding game in the IBM Challenge here on Jeopardy. The second game was a whole other story. We struggled some at the beginning. Actress who direct for a thousand. A Bronx Tale. Brad. Who is 
Robert De Niro. Correct. That was an awful category because Watson got every single one right, but was just a little too slow. Ken. Who's Denzel Washington? You got him. Ken and Brad were getting the answer in a, in a second. Rocky two, three, and four. Brad. Who is Sylvester Stallone? Correct. Even with, you know, 2,800 cores, it took us two and a half seconds or three seconds, and that just gives you a sense of how incredible the human brain is, how quickly you could understand the category, what's being asked, boom, and get the answer. Who is Sean Penn? Right. Ken was doing very well, and the risk was, if Ken gets a daily double, bets big, gets it right, he's gonna be well ahead, and then with that kind of lead going into Final Jeopardy, if he bets enough, he could end up winning the match. A camel is a horse designed by this. Ken. What's a committee? Good. Familiar sayings for 2000. We gotta find that last daily double. We gotta find that last daily double. It was nail biting. I mean, it was just intense because these guys were good. Ken. Who is the brain? Brain, yes. It was a crucial moment in the game. There was still a daily double on the board, and it was starting to become uh, pretty clear that it was in the legal ease category. Let's go to legal ease for 1200. This person is appointed by a testator to carry out the directions and requests in his will. Watson. What is executor? Right. Same category, 1600. Answer, daily double. <laughs> that was the moment when I knew it's over. Our three players have made their wagers. The category is 19th century novelists, and here is the clue. William Wilkinson's An Account of the Principalities of Wallachia and Moldavia inspired this author's most famous novel. What Watson wants to do then is preserve the lead, not take a big risk, especially with Final Jeopardy, because just like for humans, Final Jeopardy is hard for Watson. Like we knew we probably were gonna win, but what if we didn't turn on the system to play in tournament mode? What if we did the math wrong for some reason and lost by a dollar instead of won by a dollar? I wanted to wait till we see the final scores there because you don't know if something might surprise you. You came up with what? Who is Bram Stoker? You are correct. Over to Ken Jennings now, and we find who is Stoker. I, for one, welcome our new computer overlord. <laughs> Now we come to Watson, who is Bram Stoker and the wager. Hello, 17,973, and a two-day total of 77,147. Stand up, stand up, stand up. At that moment, it was just, wow, we won. It was just so, so much happiness. Jennifer has been on the team from the beginning, and she's so proud of the accomplishment. And she, you know, she was crying and, and she hugged me and she said, thank you. And I said, you know, thank you. It was these people who just, they did everything. I mean, no matter what I asked, no matter what I said to push on, you know, they did it. Amazing four years, huh? Yeah, so. thanks. <sighs> It's still sinking in for me. There's definitely a huge sense of pride in Watson, but I think what that really means is pride in the team that built it. This was a big accomplishment for people. We won Jeopardy. <laughs> They're very justifiably proud of what they've done. I would have thought that technology like this was years away, but it's here now. I have the bruised ego to prove it. My past Jeopardy experiences have been great, but. They weren't really weighty with this kind of technological, philosophical importance. I think we saw something important today. Didn't really think very much about the implications until later and say, wow, wait a second, this is history. When I do step back, I think it really is a very important technical achievement that will reveal both really important applications, but it also reveal a deeper understanding of our own intelligence, which is fascinating. Think about the internet. No one knew what the internet was gonna become and how much it would become part of all of our lives and how useful it would be. When we have questions, that's where we go now. Something like Watson has that same promise. It's transformative in the sense that you don't even know yet what it's gonna become. Of course, this whole project is not ultimately about playing Jeopardy. It's about doing research and deep analytics and a natural language understanding. This is about taking the technology and applying it to solve problems people really care about. We're just so excited about all the things we can do with this. I had thought this is the end. We get there, we're done. 
and I'm realizing it's just the beginning.